Well, in the world of funky automotive interiors, there are a few cars that can top the 1974 to 1976 Cadillac Fleetwood Talisman. And I spotted this one for sale online. It seems to be in relatively decent shape. It's a 1974 Fleetwood Talisman, the first year of it. And it appears to be finished in a really nice color called Canyon Amber. Kind of a dark brown, but not as dark as Chesterfield Brown was for the 1974 model year. You can see up front in this picture that for 1974, Cadillac redesigned their front end. And one of the prominent features was this very large textured egg crate grill. It changed that from 1973. And I don't think that it looks all that great, to be honest. I think it kind of gives the front end a somewhat strange, overwrought look. But that's what they did for the 1974 model year. And it would be revised in 1975 when the headlights would change from these round sealed beam lights to square sealed beam lights. Although you do note that for 1974, these round sealed beams are in square pods. So it's a bit of a hybrid style for the front end. And here in this rear three-quarter shot, you really get a sense of the overall length of this 74 Fleetwood Talisman. It rode atop a 133-inch wheelbase and was just a few tenths of an inch shy of 234 inches long. That's six inches shorter than 20 feet. Just an enormous and massive vehicle. Although it was not the longest non-limousine production car ever produced, that was the 1973 Imperial which was just slightly longer, albeit mainly due to bumper guards in the front and rear that had to be installed to meet five mile an hour impact standards. Aside from the overall length of the car, you can see this at the rear does have the dreaded fender extensions. That's that plastic or what was originally a rubber piece in between the bumper and the vertical element of the bumper and the fender. And that was done again for rear impact. These cars had to meet a rear impact standard where they had to crash into a solid barrier at five miles an hour and have no damage. So consequently, you see the use of these rubber flubber extensions front and rear often on General Motors cars of the year in particular. Ford tended to hang the bumpers out a bit farther from the overall car form versus General Motors, and Chrysler, I think, had perhaps the most elegant solution. These fender extensions, unfortunately, start to crack, especially after this time period, and you can get replacements, but buyer beware. If you get replacements, the replacement quality is often quite poor, and the fitment is really challenging for body shops to do. So you're going to end up spending minimum a couple thousand dollars replacing each end if you have to do so. Now, the heart of this Fleetwood Talisman is the interior, but before we turn to the interior, take a look at this shot, and you can see why these cars were called so-called colonnade cars. Notice the distinct chunky B pillar that you see at the right of this picture, and the colonnade term just refers to the architecture where you have a pretty pronounced use of columns, and you can see similar theme in this vehicle. This car was one of the early so-called colonnade vehicles. Later, GM would use that styling to try to meet rollover standards or what they thought were going to be pretty stringent rollover standards that never quite came in later years. But when the Fleetwood was introduced in 1971, it did have this distinct B pillar. And in fact, it even had a little panel in between the front and the rear door beneath the pillar to further emphasize it. But by this year, that panel had gone away and was just integrated into the doors. And here we have the heart of the Fleetwood Talisman, and that is this over-the-top, super poofy, velour interior in so-called Medici cloth. It was available in four colors, black, dark blue, medium amber, and terracotta. And you can see that there's this huge, chunky center console that we'll take a more detailed look at here in a second. It's in the middle of the seats. 1974 was the only year for the Fleetwood Talisman where it was a four-passenger car because there was a huge console in both the front and the rear. That was eliminated for the 1975 and 76 model years. And I suppose that some people thought it was just absurd to have a near 20-foot-long car 
that could only carry four passengers. I have to tend to agree with them, but it does make these four-place 1974-only talismans something unique. Now, you can also see the seats have this overstuffed design, and we talked in another video about the 1972 Olds 98 Regency and its loose cushion seating, and really that was one of, if not the first car to have the full loose cushion seats, especially in domestic cars. This isn't really a loose cushion design per se, but it's certainly an overstuffed uh, loose cushion design with crushed velour. It doesn't get much more 70s than something like this. And of course, you can see that there are acres and acres of fake plastic trees that gave their lives for this dashboard. And here's a look at the driver's seat for 1974. Certainly a comfortable place to be. I'm not quite sure how somebody doesn't fall asleep driving this vehicle. And for 1974, there was an all-new steering wheel and a new dashboard, which we'll talk about more in a second. But a number of interior design changes occurred for this year outside of just the seats and the talisman package. And here's a better shot of the instrument panel on the car. For 1974, Cadillac moved to a different instrument panel theme away from a more driver-centric instrument panel that had a wraparound area in front of the driver to this particular design that placed all of the warning lights in a bank above the normal portion of the instrument panel where all the vents are. You can see here that one of the lights is illuminated. I believe that that is the engine temperature light which was illuminated when the key was in the ignition and when you open the door. It also sounded an annoying buzzer. Now, why Cadillac chose to illuminate the stop engine temperature light when you open the door, I don't quite know, but that is what these Cadillacs do from that era. It also has the 8-track tape player and quite a bit of faux carved wood beneath the air vents. Incidentally, the air vents were one annoying thing about this interior in that after a brief period of time, you could never quite get them to stay in the desired position. They'd either flop up or flop down. One of the more annoying features of this particular interior. Here's a close-up of the steering wheel in this particular car. This was a new steering wheel design for 1974, and it would change again in 1975. This kind of yellowy faux wood grain would become darker and I think more attractive. But you can see here that the speedometer also has a one-year only feature, and that's the silver and black theme associated with it. That would go away in the 1975 model year. The speedometer would look very similar with similar markings, but the markings would become white on a black background as opposed to this particular theme that was very 70s chic. And here's a rare shot with the console open on the front seat for this Fleetwood Talisman. There was an area for a writing notepad and then there was also a light that would illuminate that notepad. A bit amazing that that's really all that this console, aside from some extra storage, housed, given that it's just so massive. I mean, this console must be over a foot in width. And you could never fit that in a car today just because of the packaging constraints. But it's uh, an amazing piece of, let's say, ostentatiousness. And here's a view with the rear console open. You notice know it's really nothing more than an oversized storage bin with two opening elements. And it does have a locking capability. But that's about it in terms of what's in between the rear seats. And this rear console does take up considerable space. You can see here, and it also precludes anyone from putting a fifth passenger in the rear which again was something that was quite strange for such a huge car. Notice that the rear C pillars have reading lights and are also cloaked in the Medici crushed velour. So was the B pillar in this car. This velour was just touching almost every surface that was imaginable. So over the top, but so cool today. And we'll close out with this underhood view of the 1974 Cadillac 472 cubic inch V8. In 1975, it would be enlarged to 500 cubic inches in the Fleetwood. The 500 cubic inch engine was introduced in the 1970 Eldorado and was an Eldorado exclusive until then. But the 472 cubic inch V8 was introduced in the 1968 model year across the Cadillac lineup. Now, unfortunately, by 1975, 
This engine, despite being 7.7 liters and 472 cubic inches, was making just 205 horsepower. And by 1976, the base 500 cubic inch V8 was making 190 horsepower. That's it. You could get an optional fuel-injected engine in 1976 that made a bit more power, but it still was pretty abysmal from a horsepower standpoint. Now, that said, the amazing thing is that when you drive these vehicles, they don't drive like total slugs. They actually drive quite decently, and even when you step on it, they seem to have pretty good passing power. So don't just write them off as being totally uninteresting to drive. For many years, I actually drove a 1976 Eldorado as my daily driver, and this engine wakes up with just a few modifications. I richened the jets and the carburetor a bit, which were lean just because of emissions during the time. I put dual exhausts on the car as opposed to the single exhaust that this car came with. And I advanced the stock ignition timing from what I believe was 6 degrees base timing to about 10, which is what it was in the early 1970s. And I will tell you that with those few modifications, it's like I gained 50 horsepower. And the car just was so much better in terms of its performance. And I even got better fuel economy. I routinely got, with my 76 Eldorado on the freeway, 14 to 15 miles per gallon, which I thought was amazing for an 8.2 liter V8 with a three-speed automatic transmission with no lockup torque converter. Around town, yes, the gas mileage was terrible. I think I probably got about seven or eight miles per gallon. But I drove that car for years on the freeway. It was absolutely trouble-free, reliable, silent, and I really, really enjoyed it. You can also see here the Cadillac V8 did have the air conditioning compressor in the middle of the V to try to minimize vibration. And the engine is, if nothing else, very smooth and silent. And you also can see the extensive cross bracing there going from the firewall to the wheelhouses to the radiator support. I think Cadillac was trying to calm what was an otherwise jiggly structure. And that was something that was different across divisions. If you pop the hood on other GM divisions of the era, despite having similar underpinnings, they don't have these four cross braces. Some have two, some have none, but this was how Cadillac chose to engineer their underhood compartment to try to get rid of some of that so-called GM jiggle, if you will. In any case, hope you enjoyed this feature on this particular 1974 Cadillac Fleetwood Talisman. Until next time, thanks for watching and take care.